All right, hello, and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel, and I got a quick announcement to make. As I crossed 1,000 subscribers, you can now become a Camel Crew member. The first two levels are essentially just a thank you or a support if you want to do that. The third level, I am going to post community only chart setups into. Now, if you don't want to pay, if you just want to be a subscriber, you don't have to worry about this. That's absolutely fine. And I'm going to continue to keep everything that you normally get from me in this channel. You're going to continue to get. So I'm not going to take away or remove anything from this channel. All the content you're used to getting, you're going to continue to get. But if you do want to become a premium member, then I will be including some members only chart setups. Now, I can't commit to a number because I only want to provide the highest quality setups with the highest probability. And for those of you that have become a member, thank you very much and welcome aboard. And we'll see what we can do from here. The big news as of last night was Nvidia beat earnings and the stock massively pumped. As you can see here, fresh all-time highs. Now, Nvidia has put in a template for exactly what you'd expect to see in a melt-up. This does not speak to bear market rally. Granted, it is only one stock, but there are plenty that are approaching their all-time highs. There are plenty at all-time highs. And this speaks to a blow-off top move. Now, I'm not by any means calling the top, but I'm just pointing at this and saying, this is a significant thing. For a mega cap to pump 33%, is unheard of so here's the market cap for nvidia you can see earnings release boom straight up so pretty insane time to be alive this obviously does not reflect pe or earnings or ratios or, or anything it doesn't reflect anything this is this is ludicrous but this is why i often say if this melt is going to unfold then it's going to be the most hated angriest saltiest least understood rally of all time and we're seeing that right here you can almost taste the tears through the keyboard look nvidia is not going to do well right Nvidia's vertical stock price action signals danger three days ago. And then five days ago, Nvidia at 180, this is ridiculous. So it is ridiculous. It doesn't make sense. But being emotional, being dogmatic, having any opinion or emotion in the market is, is worthless. Just look at the chart. And what does the chart say? The chart says we're in a blow off top. We're in a melt up phase. So this is it's not surprising to me at all. I'm sure if you are a follower of the channel, if you're a subscriber of the channel, then this probably isn't surprising to you either. And I do believe that this is not just going to be an outlier. I do believe we're going to continue to see price action like this across the board as we enter the final portion of the rally. Remember, it's not going to be in a, pop, a popular opinion. There are going to be many people that are very salty, very angry and hate this rally the whole way up. But that doesn't mean it's not going to happen. And just because it's not logical, it also doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Remember, markets can be irrational for longer than you can stay solvent. As of yesterday, I was somewhat worried that there's always a chance, right? There's always a chance that the US is going to default. But when Jim Cramer says he's extremely confident the US is going to default, I think we can breathe a sigh of relief. And if we keep things as simple as possible, we continue to make higher highs and higher lows. So as long as we don't take out these lows, then I think we can continue to trend up. I think we can continue to enter what I believe will be the final portion of the rally. Of course, I'm open to change my mind, but so far, so good. As for Bitcoin, we have got some relative weakness. But if you zoom out and look here, things don't look so bad, at least not now. Now, we've got bullish divergence. Things can change and they can change quickly, but they haven't changed yet. And if indeed we are going to have a melt up, if indeed we are going to want to trap as many people as possible, then the left translated cycle top, meaning that we peak this year and then roll over for the remaining three years of the four year cycle would, in my opinion, as I've been saying over and over again, be the way to harm the most amount of market participants. Now, as I often say, roll over or base from here and we can scratch this one off. Sharply reverse and come down to test the lows and we can also scratch this one off. But if you look at the setup that we've got right now, the break above, the retest, and now looking for that resumption, this is exactly what we had here. And of course, this move preceded a huge parabolic advance for Bitcoin. Again, I'm not saying this is going to happen. I'm just saying be open to every single scenario. Don't just sit there and say to yourself, well, it always historically based and then got to the halving and went. Don't marry one single idea. Be open to all outcomes. That includes a blow off top, the standard shape, and that includes new lows. We've got absolutely loads of Bitcoin news to get through today. The most popular financial apps have connected together for the first time. Venmo, Cash App, PayPal and Robinhood now allow users to send and receive Bitcoin between the apps. You can't send dollars, only Bitcoin. Ledger has announced its backtracking and is announcing it's going to open source its Ledger Recover protocol. So perhaps they realized that their company was dead in the water. It's going to be difficult for them to recover the trust. But this is at least a step in the right direction if they want people to continue using their wallets. This was circulating a lot yesterday. The hash rate has been soaring, which is great. We love to see that. And a lot of the new blocks were being mined by an unknown entity. And this was causing a lot of wild speculation. 
people were saying there's a new player entered the game. Who is this unknown entity? But the truth is, this was simply a mislabeling and we already know who this is. This is F2, Paul. So it's not any of that speculation that it's going to be attacked by some nation state or whatever. Or it's a new player is absolutely false. This is just F2, Paul. And it, didn't, it had a problem getting labeled for a while. So if you got caught about this, then don't worry about it. It's just F2, Paul. Even bigger news out of yesterday was that the Chinese central television broadcasting system made a piece on crypto. It's a big deal. Historically, coverage like this led to bull runs. So here's the clip. It's in Chinese. I'm not going to bother playing it to you. But China are quietly allowing Bitcoin again. So this is all going to go live in June, which is just about a week away from now. We're going to see China and Hong Kong be able to step in. Institutional money is going to be allowed to accumulate Bitcoin. And I am speculating that this is going to cause enormous upside for the price of Bitcoin. Chinese government also announced a government-backed metaverse platform. So China does not want to miss out on this bull run. They obviously know something big is coming. And I think this is very, very exciting looking forward for the price of Bitcoin. More Bitcoin has been hodled for the last year than ever before with a record 68% of all the supply. The supply continues to become more and more illiquid. There is less and less Bitcoin available. And think about it when you reduce the total supply right at the time when China is about to step in and allow institutions to start gaining exposure to Bitcoin. The idea of a big parabolic advance doesn't seem so impossible to me at least. Remember, as of today, over 1 million Bitcoin addresses hold at least one Bitcoin. Over 4.3 million addresses hold at least 0.1 Bitcoin and over 12 million addresses with at least 0.01 Bitcoin. Now you probably should allow a 25% plus or minus error margin for this since most Bitcoiners have more than one wallet. But the point remains, the trend is up and to the right. Bitcoin is indeed being adopted. And over in Georgia, their business and technology university has just partnered with Tether to create educational courses on Bitcoin and promote financial freedom. Again, speaks to adoption. Despite the price action, despite all the FUD, despite all the bearishness out there, underneath the hood, Bitcoin has never looked stronger. I don't have a great deal to say about the charts, but this is a look. As you can see, the dollar is breaking out. So we need to keep a close eye on this. Now, I would think this likely reverses once we get a debt ceiling resolution, but we have to be open to all outcomes. If we do indeed get a big breakout like this, it could spell trouble for the risk assets. Bitcoin, as you can see, not quite taking out that cycle low yet, so we do still have a valid cycle in play. However, it does look heavy, doesn't it? There's no denying that. The same is true of Ethereum. Ethereum still above its low, but it does look heavy. XRP is behaving exactly as we thought it would, speaks to a rollover and a rejection at resistance. So I still think this move is in play and I still think this trade when it eventually gets down there is going to be a big one. If we can't reverse out of here for Apple then and we lose this yellow line that I've drawn as well, this is like the final line in the sand for me. Get down below about 170 and I'll be exiting this trade and locking in the profit from this trade on Apple and go into the sidelines. If we do indeed get a breakdown, something like this, then what we can do is draw a trend line and buy the break and do it all over again. But if, we, if this thing is going to break down, there's no telling whether this is just going to break down and go sideways or whether it's going to plummet all the way down here. So I want to respect the risk here. I want to lock in my profit and that's my focus for today. The VIX has had a little pop up as you can see. So are we going to get a volatility event? Are we going to get a stock market meltdown? Or is Jim Cramer going to be wrong again? Are we going to get a debt ceiling resolution? And is this going to roll over? You know me, that's my primary expectation. As always, open to all outcomes. The NASDAQ still holding up and is up around 150 points this morning based on the futures. I think mostly because Nvidia, of course, has broken out to new all-time highs. So we'll see what happens here. Early warning sign would be a loss of this upward sloping yellow line. As long as we're still above the red upward sloping support line, then I don't think there's any problem pushing longs. The Dow Jones very close to being stopped out of break even. So not much more than we can do about that. The risk is managed. We won't take a loss. And that's, that's really all there is to say about that. The S&P 500, we still have this cycle in play. It's still valid. And all the while we're above, above this upward sloping red support line, then we're still in bullish market structure, making higher highs and higher lows. However, this does speak to weakness. This does speak to a fake out. So maybe that tells us we're going to be open to seeing further downside into that next daily cycle low due around the 3rd of July. The crypto related equities are showing relative strength again. So whilst Bitcoin comes right down and tests its recent low, the Coinbase, as you can see here, showing relative strength, holding up okay. Same is true of MicroStrategy, as you can see. So speaks to underlying relative strength in the crypto related equities. It's the same deal for Riot, as you can see. And here is Marathon, again, same deal. So we'll see how it goes. 
I'm actually going fishing today. The only thing I'm personally going to be focusing on is Apple, like I said. Everything else, if I get stopped out, that's what stops are for. I'll let the stops do the worrying. Whilst I'm on the beach fishing today, I am going to be looking to close this trade if we get below around this blue line here. So if the price comes down there, expect me to exit the trade and go back to neutral. So that's it from me. I hope you enjoy your day. I hope you enjoy the rest of your week. I hope you found value here today. Wish me luck for fishing. I've never caught a gummy shark, but I'm going gummy shark fishing today. In the UK, we call them smooth hounds. So anyway, wish me luck. And in the meantime, take care from me. All the best. Cheers. Bye.